Is that the most annoying sound you've ever heard? I think it is. Oh, it's the beginning of the show while the loading thing plays and I sing a fake song that was never invented. It's a brand new jam and it's crazy sounding because it's Wednesday! Hello? Internet? Hello? Are you the internet? Ah. What's up, internet? What's going on? It's Wednesday and I'm feeling weird. I'm feeling weird. <laughs> What's up? I hope everybody's having a fantastic day out there. Say what's up to everybody in the chat. How you doing? Do we have any questions? Uh, Rurutu says, I keep fish to make poop for my plants. I agree. Agreed. William H. says, do you know of a food nerite snails will eat? Tried algae wafers and hikari crab pellets. Hold on a second. I'll get you a link, bruh. I'll get you a link. Uh, hold on. Uh, here we go. 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 Let me find a snail food for you, my dog. Oh, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta convert this thing. I gotta convert this link. Cause boy, howdy, the, uh, old internet here gets all super pissed if I don't, uh, Make the link all tiny. <laughs> Copy. Paste. Kapow. There you go, Chief. There's a link for snail food right there. And I know because I've been trying that snail food. And I'm making a YouTube video out of it. I don't know if you guys are going to like it. You guys going to like the YouTube video stuff? Who <laughs> you knew. Maybe. Hold on, where's my phone? My phone's... Oh. My phone's in my pocket. This is the really good part of the show where I'm like, <laughs> all ridiculous. Oh. Oh, it's telling me that we're live right now. Oh, it's my phone just gave me the alert that I'm live on the channel right now. Oh, my gosh. It actually, that I think it's me. I don't know. And I'm getting a bunch of blasts out here. Don't you ever tell me? Oh, da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to set that over there. I'll read that after I'm done with the show. <laughs> Some people have the hotline and they call me on the hotline, you know, and they're like, hey, man, got to ask you a serious question. Uh, Preston John's asking, how are the Puffers? Puffers are doing great. Puffers are doing good, bruh. They are doing well, but uh, I have to say I made a serious mistake putting them in the 240 because uh, <laughs> they ain't out in the open. You know what I'm saying? They hiding out, lurking, doing cool puffer stuff and then i i'm like oh there goes one and i'm all super excited and then uh and then they're like i'm going back into the shadows because uh you know they're sneaky predators and that's what they like to do they like to hide out and ambush things like shrimps and snails and stuff like that that's going on in there so hey they're doing good i just wish i could film them more and get more action shots of them but i haven't had a lot of time to sit out there and lurk myself and be like I'm going to sneak up on these little puffers. If you guys don't know, Preston was super awesome to, uh, 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 hook me up with some of the, and I'm always saying them wrong. So I'm going to say scoot and fruity puffers. Got the scoot and fruity puffers. Oh, look at that. Savannah, the aqua llama with the, uh, hello, Dan. Hey, punchy. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Vex and cat. Hey, M Howie nine. Hey, Ed. Hey, Bentley. Hey, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. Try to say hi to everybody as a whole bunch. A whole bunch of y'all. But we got a quiet, casual Wednesday here. Only 61 people. Only 61 people being sneaky, hanging out. So you know what? Since you guys are early, let's go to the video because it's Wednesday and I do what I want. I do what I want. You know, it's Wednesday. So we're going to the video. Is it not playing? Oh, it is playing. I can see the plants all wiggling around and stuff like that. All right. Oh, man, look at that snail. There's a snail doing a boogie down there because it's in uh, it's quick speed. Oh, man, turn on the whiteboard. Is the whiteboard on? Check out this snail down here. Oh, he's going to hide. Where's he going? That's a ram's horn snail, in case anybody's wondering. Now he's moving out of the focus area. Oh, he's quick and feisty. Look at him go. Good times. All right, so uh, we're just continuing some work here on the... Uh, 
on a, a little of the one, one of the one twenties here. We're just getting some more plants in there, um, and so I decided to. I just what I decided to do was this: ask a question today, like what y'all thinking about, like why we have plants in our aquariums, and I realistically will say this that. You know, the fish for me, especially back in the day, were sort of uh, secondary. You know what I mean? Because I, I realistically got back into into keeping aquariums and stuff because I was like, oh, my God, wait, people are collecting, like, awesome, crazy plants and doing crazy stuff with aquariums. And, um, you know, the Wallstad method, I think maybe that was like 10 years ago, something like that. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure on the timeline. Maybe it was longer than that, because I think it was like 2006 or something like that. I think the Wallstab method came out in like the 70s. I want to check. Uh, when did that? When did that book come out? When was this? I mean, like it couldn't be more old school than. Uh, wait, what happened here? Oh, really? So I look something up on Google and it gets murdered by Amazon. Well, wow. when did this come out? Because I swear that I thought that the Wallstat method was like in the 70s is when it was when it came up with that. Maybe it was the 80s. Let's see. For those who don't know, the Wallstat method is a planetary also knows da, da, da. Diana Wallstead, well-known ecologist. This method describes where because, yeah, the I mean, the method itself really isn't all about the dirt and all that kind of stuff. It's really all, all about utilizing plants as the filtration, you know? So it's like no traditional filtration on it other than plants, right? So that's really uh, the deal. I don't know when that book came out. I swear it came out in like the 80s or something like that, early 80s. But um, I'm trying to figure out like when was that method... Sorry, let me look this up. The ecology of the planted aquarium. Not when did that come out? There. When? God! <laughs> this came out like this did not come out in 2013. 2013 is the third edition. So it must had to have come out before then. When did it come out? Gah. What? Well, it's like Amazon has destroyed being able to Google search a book. Oh, I'm going to karate chop the internet. Oh, man. Who has the answer? Does anybody have the answer in the chat? I don't see it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that method being used well before she published. Well, yeah, I know it was well before that. When was that book published, though? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. When did that book come out? I don't know. Original printing. Maybe we'll try that. When, did, when was it over? First edition of this book. Gosh, somebody has the second edition <laughs> for sale. <laughs> Let's karate kick the internet right in the dome piece right now. Just trying to, like. It's been the standard guide to low tech aquarium since its first publication in. Okay, 1999. All right, so. That at least verifies my brain thinkings on the fact of, like. But I think I thought it was the 70s is when it comes out. But it says the Ecology of the Planet Aquarium Practical Manual for Scientific Treatise. I don't know what that word is. What is that word? <laughs> Let's look that word up, you guys. We're going down the Google rabbit hole today. Tredis. Tredis. Uh, a written work dealing formally and systematically with a subject. Huh. Yeah, that is not normal for me to see a word and not know what it is but that's neat i'm i'm into that word of the day here we go i'm gonna copy and paste this right down in here copy 
paste. Boom. Dropping that. Oh, too many too many characters? All right, let me get this last one over there. It says it's obsolete, but here we go. There's the there's the word of the day, you guys. I threw it right there in the chat for you. You can read it with your eyeballs. You don't even necessarily have to listen to my incessant yammering because you could just read it through the chat. Oh, my God, and you'd be word of the day. And just imagine how smart you'd be on a, on a Wednesday. Oh, my God. You'd be like, I'm changing the game on a Wednesday. And people would be excited for you. I would be. I know that I would. Okay, needless to say, let's go back to why we ended up going down the... Uh, why we ended up trying to just go down the old rabbit hole there of, of, of chaos and disorder. Of just trying to... Uh... Ed's Fish says, mine says 1999, but it's a borrowed internet copy. Well, we, we don't endorse that around here. We don't endorse the, the borrowing of internet copies. Except for when it's Star Wars, because, you know, who cares? We appreciate... We appreciate the... Uh, what do you call that? Bootleg Star Wars? <laughs> I don't know, dudes. I'm feeling super weird today. Um, anyhow, so what I was mainly talking about was is I wanted to mention that, um, you know, when I got back into doing aquariums uh, from, you know, most of us do this stuff when, when we're younger, uh, you know, namely... If, if somebody else is paying the mortgage, you know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody else is paying the mortgage, it gives you a good opportunity to do aquariums when you're a youngster. You know what I mean? You're like, I want to get a turtle. I want to get I want to get a salamander. I want to get I want to get a chameleon. I want to get 200,000 rummy nose tetras and put them in an aquarium, dad. And that's the kind of thing um, that most of us start out at and Honestly, most people I, I've heard that are a little longer in the tooth like myself and above uh, pretty typically kind of take that break between sort of 18 and 25 or something like that. Because it's, there's a lot going on when you're a youngster like that. You know, you got to be doing a lot of wind sprints, uh, deep knee bends, um, kung fu karate moves you know, a lot of calisthenic type things when you're that young and, uh, it takes up a lot of your time. You don't, you don't necessarily have time for, uh, fish tanks, AKA you're super poor and, uh, trying to work three jobs in order to pay the rent and stuff like that. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of people, once they start to get more established as a, as an adult and start to have some more, you know, secondary income type things, or, um, you know, a little money saved up in the bank and maybe some stability in their, you know, home life and that kind of stuff. That's when aquariums reappear. And, you know, that's, that's pretty, that's not that different from my story. That's pretty accurate to my story too. So, um, but the, the thing that really got me back into it was the idea of, wait a minute. So they're not even using filters on these aquariums. They're not even using filters at all. And, uh, and I was like, how are they doing it? It's like, Oh, they're they're building an ecosystem with plants. And, you know, ever since then, you know, I'd like to say that was like 2006, something like that. Um, ever since then, I've I've just been kind of a, a weirdo uh for boxes filled with water that have plants growing in them. You know, otherwise known as an aquascape or a planted aquarium, whatever whatever you want to call it. You can call it you could call it a, a fancy water box. I'm a fancy water boxman. And um, so that's what I've been pretty much uh, just transfixed by, really. You know what I mean? And um, so that's really kind of in my focus. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I have a ton of knowledge about fish and shrimp and all that kind of stuff. I think, I've, I, think I have a fair bit. Um, you know, there's... A very few species that I would put out there that I would say that I'm even approaching any kind of uh, mastery, you know, and that would be, you know, freshwater shrimp I'd put into that category, uh, betas, a few other things, you know, killifishes and, you know, tetras and puffers. And I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that I, I know, but I wouldn't necessarily say that like, you know, oh, I could name every puffer fish or I could, uh, you know, 
you know, break down like every type of Tetra from my brain because that's my what I do all the time. Um, but no, I mean, and I certainly can't name every plant or anything like that, but um, I do have a, a pretty deep agricultural background and all that kind of stuff. So that's been my focus. And that's realistically, I've noticed that the one thing that seems to be a real contiguous um, thing that like breaks people into the hobby is showing them a planted aquarium that is like very well done, that looks really good. Because there, I really couldn't tell you that there's one fish out there. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't. I couldn't sit down and go like, oh, there's a sturgeon, man. Anytime anybody sees this sturgeon, the next thing they do is they go home and figure out if they can set up an aquarium. Because I don't think that there's one type of, you know, crayfish or shrimp or regular fit, you know, fish. I can't even think of anything that basically sparks the interest as much as a healthy planted aquarium realistically and people that don't have them you know so um you know i don't i don't put myself that far out from that group of people either you know um i didn't have the idea that like man i should really get back into doing fish tanks and stuff like that um because you know basically I, if i thought back to when i was a kid and i had fish tanks my fish didn't do very well um, obviously until I was like older, but, um, you know, my fish didn't do all that well. Cleaning aquariums was a nightmare. Cleaning filters was crazy. Um, you know, doing water changes, doing all this kind of stuff that you don't necessarily want to do. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much the, the thought process that most people have when they think about like, oh, you know, when I was a kid, I, uh, you know, I had some fish tanks, but I hated it because it was just like chores all the time, you know, because they didn't have anything really like great to look at. Um, and I think that honestly, I think that like the Planet Aquarium is the one thing that will appeal to anybody. You know, there might be some weird robots out there that are like that we're not even sure if they're actually humans or not. Right. That might just be like, oh, no, that's not for me. I would rather it be like a desert. You know, I I don't like that. But I would, you know, ninety percent of people or something like that, uh, if they see a really nice scaped aquarium with good healthy plants and stuff growing in it, that's just like a natural appeal. You know, um, you know, I don't I don't think that there's people that would be like sitting around at home going, man, I wish I could be looking at some pictures of some mountains, bro. But almost everybody, when you show them a picture of like a really nice composed picture of mountains and forest and stuff, they're like. Oh my God, that's awesome. I don't even hike, but I want to go there, you know? Um, so I, I think that's the one thing that kind of appeals to everybody is just the idea that, um, that you could have, um, some kind of crazy, uh, garden all year round that you're maintaining. And it just has that feeling of summertime all the time. And, uh, one of the plants that I'm putting in there today is one of those plants that I think it doesn't matter who you are. When it's growing healthy, um, it straight up draws you in. It straight up draws you in and just goes like, what is that? And uh, I'd be happy if you guys want to do a Google search. That's totally cool because obviously I don't have the grown-in version here. Uh, I have the little tiny tissue culture cup version and you can see all the little tiny tiny dead leaves floating around in there and stuff if you're like me don't worry about that the filter will handle it i have a giant sump on the thing and uh, it'll don't don't worry about that water clear to be back in no time not a big deal uh, but this is ludwigia arcuata which is not a plant that you typically see in a store you don't ever see this plant in a store, and um, and I and so I figured out of all of the plants I got from Dennerlay, this is probably one of the more important ones for the area that I live in because this is another one of those plants that I would like I'm going to grow out, <clears throat> and then I'm going to like accidentally drop some off 
into Bentley's tanks and then drops them off into like, you know, Alyssa's tanks and whoever else is in the area. I'm going to accidentally drop them off in there because <laughs> this is a plant that I would definitely like to see um, take over a little bit for some of the other Ludwigias uh, just because of its has this really fine leaf structure. They're kind of, I guess, maybe if you wanted to give it like a street name, you'd maybe call it like a needle leaf or something like that. Um, you know, highlight high iron and everything. It'll turn red. Um, when it's real low lying like this, it's this real vibrant green. So it's a, it's a really kind of cool adaptable plant depend to, depending on your system. And I really don't think that there's, I really don't think that there's, any of its forms that are unattractive. They're just different, you know? So um, it's one that I would like to see more in my area, and I really don't see it around here very often. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely going to be setting aside some plant, some tank space for this plant and uh, just keep replicating it as much as I can. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe lower the market a little bit on the repens and things like that. Um, and just keep going and, um, and going that route. Right. Uh, 54 punchy says, if you see a big guy, six, two with a beard walking around with files, say hi, that's my son. <laughs> All right. Next time I see a big dude with a beard and he's carrying some files around, I'm going to be like, yeah, what's up, Pamela's son? Now, I might be right. I might be wrong, but not a bad deal altogether, right? I mean, maybe they'd be like, I'm not Pamela's son. And I'll be like, well, now we're good friends at least. <laughs> you know. You know. All right, let's see what's going on with the rest of the chat. Um, Estegles says, anyone know where I can buy lava rock sand? Uh, yeah, the rock yard. <laughs> Any landscaping place will have lava rock sand. And uh, don't don't buy it. Just buy it locally. Uh, lava rock sand should be like $5 for a 50-pound bag. And I think mainly what you're paying for is the bag. <laughs> So don't spend a lot of money on it. There's a bunch of weirdos selling lava rock for really high prices on online. And I don't understand who buys it. I don't understand who buys that stuff because you can go to pretty much any landscaping place or most, most hardware stores have lava rock. So don't buy it from like aquascaping people and stuff. It's just nuts. I mean, you're paying like a thousand percent what the price should be you know so i'd go that route avery hill has octopus plant in a co2 medium light tank with 78 degrees it's growing slowly and with pale and twisted small leaves i'm ready to tear my hair out um i i also dose iron and my nitrates are 20 parts per million uh twisted pale leaves uh typically means there's something going on with your light. I think that would be the main thing that is going on in your tank. So I'm interested in what kind of lighting you have. Um, and I would also be interested in what is going on with the pH in your aquarium. Other than that, it might be a spot to jump off at. Estegles says bonsai people buy it. Um, I find more success with my bonsai trees with uh, hydrogen, which is an aquaponic um, soil, and perlite. I use those two in um, combination, and I've had better success with my bonsai. And by the way, my bonsai game right now is zero. My bonsai game might even be negative because I have big trees growing in the backyard, right? So I might be like negative 20 bonsai right now. Uh, I definitely need to step up my bonsai game. Having gone to uh, Tom Barr's house and checked out his bonsais, I'm like, dude, there's another level of the bonsai game I didn't even know about, man. He had some tiny bonsais that were like, he had some cedars, he had some cypress. Good Lord. I was so excited. Nobody liked that video. I released that video and 
I released that video and the regular subscribers like you guys, which thank you very much for watching it. You guys watched it. No one else watched it. So it's all right. It'll just be an enigma shrouded in mystery. <laughs> uh, but man, I got to up my bonsai game this next year. So I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably build some uh, shelvings at some point in time because I have to build the strawberry shelving. So I'll probably build that. Uh, at the same time, and then sneak some bonsais in there. Maybe Vicky will take care of them for me. You know what I mean. Uh, my parents' basement says, never thought of Home Depot. Well, I try not to think of Home Depot, but considering I have to stop by there almost every day of my life, it just seems like, it just seems like I, I don't ever get to not think about Home Depot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's weird, dude. It's weird. I'm there a lot. It's unsettling. Uh, 54 Punchy's laughing at me. She says, my son works at the clinic where Candy takes Caleb for treatment. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't realize. that. That is cool. If you guys don't know who Caleb is, if you guys don't know who Candy is, well, I would like you to take a second. Oh, hold on. Where'd my stupid link go? Where did my link go? Um, I'm on my link game today, you guys. I'm on it. I know I have it pinned, but I don't know where it went. Here we go. If you guys are wondering who Caleb is, uh, Caleb is, you know, he's the number one fan of the show here. A young man who's been uh, in a, in a an incredible battle with uh, leukemia. And big shout out to James McDonald, Daryl Deemer, Bradley Park, and Chad Kratz, uh, Rebecca Mortensen, Kimberly Rosalind, Jesse Tom, Joel Gillett, Stephen Scogland, Max Solomon. Bunch of names there that I bet you recognize. Those are the most recent donations over on their GoFundMe. Uh, look at that. We've, we're getting real close to that goal. We're getting real close to that goal uh, of helping out the family. And uh, just helping out with all the bills and all the crazy stuff going on uh, with uh, having gone through the battle of leukemia, you guys. It, it's not, I don't know. Apparently in the United States of America, we still, in 2018, we're, it's about to be 2019, you guys. In 2019, you know, we as a society, our government, the people that are supposed to be taking care of, uh, you know, they take care of the trillions of tax dollars and stuff. We can't even get you know, child leukemia covered, right? We have to we have to team up as a fish fam to try and help out. And you know, we've done a lot. We're getting close. We're getting close to the goal. Which is exciting. And yet somehow it's like depressing even on my end. It's it's depressing on my end that we have almost four hundred million people here and uh why can't we just get some of these, like, like it's not hard enough, you know what I mean? Like, it's not hard enough to just have a terrible, terrible illness, right? And then, what do we, you have, like, no safety net for our people? It's bonkers. I'll get off my, uh, I'll get off my pulpit now and go back to talking about plants. But um, if you guys want to help out, you can. You can jump over there to the uh, GoFundMe and, uh, you know, you could be just kicking a dollar, something like that. You just leave like a, a nice comment that you're uh, that you're giving a shout out just to let them know that uh, you got some you got some thoughts and prayers and whatnot. You can throw it out on Facebook. You can just go around and blast it all out there on Facebook if you feel like. You just hit the share button if you're like, dude, I want to do something, but I ain't got no money, which I understand. So I ain't got no money either. You guys I started doing my taxes today, and it is immense. So that's probably a little while. I got a little cranky with the government because it's like, wait a minute. I'd rather give all that money to Caleb and help out Caleb, but I got to give it to these guys so that they can buy a missile and shoot it at somebody. It's ridiculous. <sighs> and there goes probably another jet flying over my house so that they can deliver the missiles. They got to get good practice, you know, because it's all sunny out and it's Wednesday. So you should be flying around your missile jets, right? Uh, Daniel Keeping Fish says, we just dropped a wee top up in the Caleb jar there. Hugs and high fives to him and you. Well, thank you very much, you guys. You guys know, um, I, I appreciate it. 
I appreciate all you guys' help. It's been super awesome, just the outpouring of support to help out. Uh, and, uh, you know, I heard the other day that there actually is a, like, there's a date, like, seven months from now where they, he'll hopefully be on his final treatment, um, which is cool. I think it's cool that, but that's still, you know, I don't want to be sick for the next seven months, and I, I don't think Caleb does either. So it's still crazy. Uh, Benjamin C P says, is there a PayPal we can donate to him instead? I'm not really a fan of GoFundMe. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Sorry. Uh, Cora, uh, Kira says, may I have permission to share this link on my Twitch channel? Uh, the GoFundMe or my show? I can just share my show wherever you want. I don't care. We put it up on the pot. We put it up on the, uh, we put it up on the, uh, what you call it? Podbean for free. I mean, we don't. All the funding for this show comes from the Patreon. If you guys don't know what the Patreon is, <laughs> since we just got done talking about GoFundMe, we might as well talk about Patreon, right? Um, all the funding for this show comes from uh, comes from the Patreon, and um, so yeah, there you go. I just got off uh, email emailing with a guy uh, who is in Africa who wants to print some shrimp artwork and stuff. So I am going to pass on some shrimp artwork stuff. So maybe you guys will be able to get some international shirts. Maybe you're in Africa or maybe Africa ships to Europe. I don't know. Uh, but maybe you guys are out there and you want to get a shirt. I'm just giving him license to use that. <clears throat> uh, Kira says to GoFundMe, but you too. Yeah, I would rather you share out the GoFundMe. I don't, you know. We share out the Patreon here, and then everybody flips out that I do commercials for funding this show. You know, they're like, what do you think you are, NPR? And I'm like, well, it's kind of that same format. <laughs> we're, we're funded by the people that listen, just like NPR, right? Uh, National Public Radio, you know. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Avery Hill says, I have 7 PH and a Finex Planet 24-7. I also dose Easy Green. Thank you so much. Hmm. That is weird. I, I'm surprised on what you, with that setup you got going on there he was asking a question earlier about um i think it was pogo stem and i think i have an octopus plant cdo2 medium light tank that is kind of weird um maybe you have it planted strangely i don't know i would i would just um I would say at this point, uh, type all that up, Avery, and you can you can always email me Joel at Dark Star Arts, um, and you can throw some pictures in there, and maybe we'll get a better idea and go down that route. Speaking of having emailed me, uh, Oh, Preston John is asking, are you able to create a Patreon level between the 20 and the 100? Um, I, I could create a level at anything. You guys can always type in a custom amount. If you guys want a Patreon, a custom number. Like, um, <laughs> hold on. Let me find, let me find some of the, uh, let me find some of the funny, uh, Patreon amounts. Cause I know like Barbara Jackson, she donates pie. So 3.14, <laughs> she donates pie. Aquafuzzy does $3.35, which is pretty funny. Uh, Barbara Jackson donates pie. Oh, she's double pie, 62. Barbara Jackson is a huge patronizer of the show here. What happened? My God, you guys, we had to stop the show for a second there. Something nutty was going on. <laughs> Woo! Sorry about that. 
There's a crazy dog noise going on. It turns out grandma, grandma number three or whatever, has a crazy barky dog that was sounding like one of my dogs was having a problem. Turns out everything's okay. But uh, yeah, we're all right. So everything's fine. Whew, what were we doing? We we're re reviewing weird uh, Patreon amounts. <laughs> yeah, you can even put in the cents. That's all, all I was, I guess that's all I was trying to say was uh, that uh, you can put whatever you want in there. Um, uh, uh, realistically, all of the tiers and the levels are all pretty much just sort of arbitrary because you don't necessarily get anything unless you're at the, uh, I mean, unless you're at the independently wealthy investor tier or the producer tier, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> the we have one producer here and if you guys don't know it's the fishy mailman uh, we have one producer here super generous i should basically just ask barbara like what i should be making because the fishy mailman always just says just make whatever you want to make man it'll be awesome and then or, or uh you know he's asking like um i was asking him what to make at one point and he's like just make whatever caleb wants <laughs> and i'm like okay i'll make whatever it is um so yeah, I mean, they're just kind of arbitrary. Like, you, I, you know, I know that some people are like, man, we should get rewards. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Mailing stuff off to people is crazy. If you guys have never done it before, trying to send out 200 things a month is like a, it's a full-time job. Like trying to figure out what's going out where. Like, if you're, like, printing things and doing all that kind of stuff, it is nuts. And I wouldn't even be able to do this show if that was the case. So, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'll be giving stuff out to, um, like, maybe you guys would be able to order some shirts if you're in Africa. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know how that works, but I don't know. I thought it was just kind of an interesting thing that happened earlier today. And Dan Squire says, we love the fishy mailman. You're right, we do. That guy is awesome. Uh, Lucy and Richard said, hey, I just found out the show was on. How's it all doing? <laughs> We're doing good. <laughs> We're just hanging. We're just hanging here on a Wednesday. There's some crazy dog stuff there for a second. Uh, doctor's back. Got to run. Okay. Speaking of the Patreon, I couldn't make this month's. My account is at 89 cents. Oh, my God, Tom. <laughs> yeah, don't. Don't worry about patronizing if your account is down to 89 cents, brother. Don't don't worry about that. Um, Greg Jones is laughing because sending out hundreds of things per month. Yes, a full-time job. Um, you know, I don't have the infrastructure for shipping stuff out. So that would be the biggest, the biggest issue. Like, um, you know, the aquarium co-op or my aquarium box, you guys, I mean, you have all the scales and the, the box is already there and you're able to print the labels and do all those kinds of things. Like I don't, um, you know, it's, uh, it's really one of those things. Like I don't have any of that infrastructure. So sending out a bunch of stuff to people just doesn't work. Just don't work. Um, so the, the tiers here are basically the generosity of people that just want to keep the show going and see how things can progress. And you know, the way I look at it is like, if you're somebody that's like $1, $5, $10, $20 a month, and you get to, uh, let's say you get five hours of entertainment in a month, you know, at 20 bucks, that's like going to see a movie, which is normally 90 minutes long. And they always leave you in a cliffhanger with Thanos at the end. Right. So, you know, you're, you're like, I just want to go see the infinity war. Oh, it's a cliffhanger. Cool. Oh, I have to wait two years for the next part. I forgot what happened at the beginning. Cool. Oh, you guys want me to go watch all these other movies in the meantime, they don't have anything to do with the infinity war, but I just wanted to find out if they beat Thanos or not. This is not really exactly a comic book experience that I was hoping to have a comic book experience. Oh my God. You know what I'm talking about? So I don't know. And if you don't feel like there's any value, then that's cool too. You got to do what you got to do. It's all good. I don't mind. 
I don't mind if you leave. It's okay. We had a lot of people leave this week, so I'm probably a little cranky about it, but whatever. Because I guess maybe I do care. I don't know. <laughs> ah. Pea puffer people, would you put pygmy quarries in a 20 long with three p puffers? Mm. I personally wouldn't. I personally wouldn't. I don't I don't think that it would be a good environment for them. Uh, and pygmy quarries do spend a lot of time swimming higher up in the tank. It's not like they're or, uh, pygmy quarries. Sorry. Did I say pygmy puffers? Pygmy quarries spend a lot of time kind of zipping around up in the tank, so they definitely will interact. Um, and pea puffers might ignore just some typical quarries since they're because they're always down low. But I don't know. I, I don't think that I would. If I had pea puffers, I would just keep them a pea puffer tank. I think I would. Let's see. Dan Squire says I'm hashtag salty Joel. Am I salty? Was I salty today? I don't know. I'm just, I thought it was just weird today. Uh, Bentley's asking, how long have you had the Pogostemon in the tank? I'm wondering if you're seeing some really strong conversion melt. Uh, it could be a new plant. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Bentley. Could just be a brand new a brand new plant. I don't know. It sound it sounded like he was at wit's end and uh, he was going to pull his hair out. So it almost feels like, like maybe it's been a while. Because I normally don't get to pulling my hair out until... I've worked on something for a while, right? Mm. Uh, so, oh, Susan from SLC Aquatics says, Hey, Joel, I'm late. So is that dragon stone? That's Sierra stone. That is Sierra stone in this, uh, in this 120 right here. From the Aquarium Co-op, sponsored by Kobe from the Aquarium Co-op, who's hanging out on a beach in Hawaii right now. You know, he's doing that beach life. <laughs> I think he's on Oahu. Or Kauai, I think. I don't know. Hawaii. He's in one of, somewhere in Hawaii, you know? Avery Hill's had it for about two weeks. Okay, yeah, two weeks is not long. Yeah. Plant game, two weeks is not that long. So stick with it. Stick with it. Keep it consistent. You could definitely be in conversion. Maybe it got cold. Maybe it got hot in shipping. Uh, maybe your water's considerably different from where you got it. Yeah, so I, two weeks in, I wouldn't stress out that much. Um, if it completely melts off and dies, then yes, I would have a problem. But uh, it sounds like you're just going through conversion, you know? Yeah, just could be converting. And, and I would just stick with it. Stick with it. Plants take time, and you got to have some patience. I know I don't have patience sometimes, and I sometimes I go outside and yell at my garden, and I'm like, dude, where's all the squash? You know, like, hey, bros, where's the squash? And the plants are just like, dude, we're going slow, bro. So, yeah, you know how it is. Let's see. Ooh, somebody was asking. I like how I like how you do your plant slash hard sale. Yes. I guess. Thank you, Jason. I'm confused, but... Moving on, because I don't have an answer. Um, Barbara Jackson says they're too busy taking care of their corporate sponsors. Pirates be in charge these days. Oh, God, what are you guys talking about? The government's selfish. Oh. <laughs> Alyssa Miner says, can you have too much nutrients in your substrate? It's possible, for sure, especially if you do a dirted tank. Like, I've seen a lot of people uh, do the dirted tank thing, and uh, pfft, it normally leads to disaster. A dirted tank is a perfect example of too much nutrients in your substrate, and it normally just gets out of hand. And I don't want to argue about it because almost always the people that argue about it, if I've been at a convention, if I've been somewhere um, online, wherever it is, it almost always is once you have a long enough conversation with them, they're like, yeah, I've had a bunch of tanks do that, but it's the best. And like, I'm like, dude, whatever. All right, cool. I want to help people that I want to help people not have disasters. That's kind of the idea, right? Like maybe I didn't grow 400 turnips this year in the garden, right? But we also didn't have a fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like like oh man, maybe we only produced 200 turnips this year, so we're not going to be able to have turnip soup every day. 
we're going to have to skip days on our turnip soup. But we also would not want to burn the whole place down, right? So that's kind of the deal. If I hope that makes sense. Some people are saying, congratulations to Dan. What happened here? My best friend asked me to be his daughter's godfather. Oh, congratulations, my guy. That is a good, um, I would say your friend is a pretty good judge of character because if you guys don't know, Dan Dan and I, we, we talk a lot. And uh, Dan is a good bloke, right? Is that how they say it? Is that how they say it over there? Jezza, is it something like that? I don't know. I'm confused. I watch these British shows and I'm just confused. Yeah, I met uh, a buddy of mine's from Wales, you know, and um, it's hard to think that like, you know, the UK is just like a whole bunch of weird little countries all jammed together on this weird island. It's it's no mystery to me why they were fighting all the time. They were always cranky. There's just not enough tea on that island. for. <laughs> so many people in Europe are going to be so mad at me right now. All right. We'll stop talking about that. But Dan's an awesome dude, and we talk a lot. I mean, you know, I give him a hard time. Let's see here. Planted my newest tank this morning from T. Riddle. Hopefully it will grow well. Plant noob. Nice. That is basically step one, you know. Get the tank filled with water. Get some good substrate in there and some rocks and some some sticks. And then just uh, get to planting and see what happens, you know. Like, you know, you might not have enough CO2. You might not have enough light. You might not have this, that, the other thing. But uh, if you don't have a tank planted, it's certainly not going to work. So, hey, give it a shot. See what happens. You know, this uh, Ludwigia Arcuata, which I almost always am saying wrong. So before anybody posts a bunch of comments about how I'm saying that wrong, I'm just going to admit it. Probably saying it wrong. Arcuata, I think, is how you're supposed to say it, but I don't know. You know, I don't even know how to say good bloke. <laughs> a good bloke taking the piss. Is he taking the piss? These English people are weird. Um, like, this plant will grow very, very, gosh, hold on. This plant will grow a bunch of different ways depending on the you know, basically the environmental standards, right? Um, so like, you know, if you have low light, high CO2, no iron, right? What's it going to do? So we got low light, which means it's going to grow bigger, wider leaves to try and photosynthesize more. It's going to grow taller and reach towards, reach towards the light because it's lacking light, but it has a lot of CO2, right? In this setup, this hypothetical setup that we're talking about right now. It's going to be able to grow, but it's also going to reach and stretch and kind of put itself out there and try and absorb more of the really low light tank. So that would be a good example, I think, to talk about. That is a question I get a lot in regards to, you know, do I have enough light? Now, plants will grow if they have enough nutrients. And, you know, there is a point where you literally don't have enough light, um, but that's probably you're going to have to, like throw a sheet over your tank in order to do that. Uh, and, uh, so there is a point where you could hit not enough light, but that's pretty rare these days with just how directional and how focused and, um, uh, and how much goes into, you know, basically goes into setting up or, uh, you know, building the lights and, you know, retailing a light to somebody, even a Phoenix, even a Phoenix light has a little bit of R and D development into it. Right. Um, so that's really going to be some kind of light. It's going to be so, it would be so rare that you would have like an actual aquarium light that uh, was putting out not enough light to even grow a plant at all, right? They'll just tend to grow in different ways. And, you know, one of the ways that they would grow is if they, like, let's say you were injecting a bunch of CO2 and uh, you had that low light. That's typically what you'd see out of them. They'd stretch. They'll grow wider leaves. They'll probably, they might be a little bit pale, stuff like that. Um, they certainly aren't, well, more often than not, aren't going to grow red. Even a red plant will convert and just be like, all right, fine, I'm going to grow green. 
Um, and fifty four punchy says duckweed. I have a tank that was getting a, uh, wasn't getting enough light because of the duckweed. That's like putting a sheet over your light. <laughs> so it's just like putting a, a a plant sheet over the light. You know. Uh, let's see. John Gilman says, what method do you use for measuring your CO2 level? Uh, I just monitor pH these days, but a, um, what is it called? Uh, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Oh no. The stupid glass thing that measures CO2. <laughs> this will take a second. CO2. Hold on. Uh, what's it? Uh, how do you? Oh my God, brain fart. I got dad brain, guys. Drop checker, right? Right? I think that's what they're called. Oh God. Oh, it worked. It took me a second. The drop cake, a drop checker is going to be the best way to go. I don't know why I couldn't even remember how to. <sighs> it's getting next level over here, guys. It's getting starting to get warm in here again. Also, uh, here's a link right here. That's a drop checker indicator with the fluids, $17. It's going to be something. Uh, use a drop checker in conjunction with a pH monitor to find out what's going on with your CO2. A drop checker give you a great idea. The pH monitor will also tell you, like, your system, when it's getting X amount of CO2, what happens with the pH. The pH is going to be the easiest method, realistically, if you're... Somebody that can afford a pH monitor or whatnot. I've gotten all mine for free um, just from having bought, like, used systems on, on Craigslist. I've gotten them secondhand from, like, reef guys <laughs> that just had them. Um, and you can find a really old um, – one of my old videos, it was, like, sponsored by some Marine Depot, I think. Marine Depot sent me one for free, and I tested it out. Um, that one worked. But they're, they're pretty expensive, and they're kind of – stupid because you have to you have to essentially calibrate them like once every couple of months and it's really easy to have completely forgotten to calibrate it and and be like dude that thing's still working and it's completely not um but a drop a drop checker is just kind of the route to go and just kind of figure out exactly what your system does on a regular basis you're really going to get a feel for it over time honestly um that that would be kind of the best advice that i could i could give you in relation to um, you know, how I kind of monitor CO2, I can, you know, I can check my pH, see what's going on. And, um, in conjunction with everything else, like how the plants are growing, what's happening in there, um, and have a good idea of, of what's happening with the CO2. You, you're really not having to get a crazy level of CO2 into the tank. You know what I mean? It's, um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, CO2 in water. Gadoosh. There we go. Um, so it's the air that is around us, this is one that I already know, is 400 parts per million in the air, give or take. Give or take a couple. I think it's up to 410 now because uh, climate change is happening because we keep pumping a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere. Um I think it's up to 410 now, uh, and I wanted to double check water because I think I thought it was 13, but it turns out the internet is telling us uh, that it is uh, 10, 10 parts per million in water. So we're trying to get um, essentially from 10 to approximately 20, 40 at the highest. Um, so we're not even having to get to the concentration that's in air, realistically. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's, I guess hopefully that's like a reasonable explanation that like when we're injecting CO2, we're not going totally crazy. Um, we're just doing a little bit into the air or a little bit into the tank comparative to how much is in the air. So, um, uh, people have asked me over the, t over the years, like whether or not they could add, um, you know, CO2 from the air and no, that doesn't work. Um, oxygen overpowers it by far outnumbers the CO2. So the CO2 realistically needs to come from a source that is pure CO2 and you can do DI do it yourself. Um, a CO2, you know, with yeast and sugar, it's actually pretty easy to do. It's just a mess and you have to constantly do it all the time. That's why I don't do it anymore. I don't do it that way. 
Uh, Seth is asking what uh, Kelvin, lumens, etc. should I be looking for in a T8 bulb? Um, a T8 bulb isn't going to put out that many lumens. I think it's probably in the like 400 range. I think depending on how long it is. I mean, obviously it's going to be different for wattage. Um, how many lumens it puts out is pretty irrelevant. Um, cause most T8 bulbs are going to put out around the same amount of lumens. Uh, but you're looking for 6,500 Kelvin, uh, is what you're looking for. Um, and if you have a ton of them, maybe think about getting a pink bulb and start going, in a different route, but 6,500K is basically the all-around performer as far as uh, T8s, T5s, that kind of stuff. That's going to be your general, um, the general Kelvin rating that you're looking for. There we go. Lumens isn't going to be a huge ordeal because T8s are pretty inefficient and they just put out as much light as they put out. It really isn't like a better t8 out there there are better t5s but your question was about t8 so we'll stay on that we'll stay on topic right uh m howie 9 is asking hey joel what's your recommendation for trimming a ponageaton uvaseus uh, i have some that is starting to get out of control um there isn't much to do with a ponageaton as far as like trimming goes um it grows up to the top and it grows up as big as it's gonna grow uh i've really never been able to trim it because you wherever you trim it just kind of kills off that little bit of the leaf and just turns brown and looks a little funky um it's sort of like trimming um oh dad brain i have dad brain again oh, but you can't really trim them you can split them you can definitely split them uh you can take the spike uh and uh, create more of them uh but it is not really a plant that I could try to like trim down or side to side or anything like that because the like I said the leaves just get kind of jacked. Um, Vexen Cat says sugar and yeast makes a great mosquito trap as well. I can agree with that. That I've experienced that. Uh, Ed's fish says I think I need to bite the bullet and use actual aquarium lights. My homemade stuff just isn't cutting it. Um, that's sort of the conclusion I got to. Probably three years ago uh after probably 10 years of doing my own lighting finding cheap lighting whether it be cheap leds or t5s or t8s or whatever um it uh i really had to i really had to just walk away from wasting my time uh doing that but you know on the lighter side i definitely know a lot about lights now <laughs> Like yesterday, I, I rebuilt a whole bunch of T8s for, for a job I was doing yesterday. And it was just like, yeah, I've done this many times. <laughs> uh, which unfortunately put, normally puts you in a position that people are going to have you like replace their ballasts and stuff like that and their lights. Which is fine. I don't mind doing it. It's just kind of tedious, you know. But I don't mind doing it. I mean, I like doing the work. And I definitely like having taken something from broken and fixing it. But... It's not really much that much of a fix. It's just more of a replace, repair and replace, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to build. I do not know how to build ballasts from scratch. I could bake you a cake from scratch, though. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Viz Aquarium says you, they say you can also do this with spa water for a small tank. Never done that. Uh, not sure what you're talking about. I'm probably out of uh, context. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we've got a $7.60 super chat from Vexing Cat. Well, thank you. There's no question on it, so let's find somebody who asked a question. Boop, 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 boop. Reading, 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 reading. Um, that's not really a question. Where do you guys buy CO2 tanks from? From Lisa C. I've looked into them, and for a five-pound cost, this five-pound CO tanks, CO2 tanks for fifty bucks, is about a third of the prices they used to be. They used to be about hundred and fifty bucks. Twenty-pound tanks that were aluminum used to be three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so fifty dollars for a five-pound tank is a steal. 
these days. Uh, but the place that I go is Craigslist. Go look on Craigslist and you can find um, you can find some old tanks. You know, you can find uh, any kind of auctions, old restaurant auctions and stuff like that. Uh, just make sure that you aren't buying something that's labeled from like Pepsi Cola or Coca Cola or RC Cola or Tab. Um, let's not forget about Green River Soda. Let's not forget about some other pop companies like Jolt. Anyhow, sorry. Uh, the CO2 tanks that come from like restaurants and all that kind of stuff that that uh, are labeled from a company, you can't legally transfer those. So that's always an issue. And so keep that in mind. Just a, a, a just a friendly reminder from your buddy over here that has uh, encountered issues before. Um, just make sure they're not from a company other other than. Uh, just make sure there's no mark, no no markings on it that somebody owns it if you're buying it from a uh, auction. But those restaurant auctions are a great place to find the 20s and the 50 pound tanks. You can find 50 pound tanks there sometimes for 10 bucks or free because they're like, we just got to get these out of here. <coughs> uh, so, and by the way, a 50 pound tank lasts a long time, and um, it only costs like what is it? Probably like twenty more dollars to fill a fifty pound tank. So a twenty pound tank costs me thirty two dollars to exchange. And I think a fifty two two pound or a fifty pound tank costs like maybe forty eight bucks. So I guess it's less than twenty more. So you, the the bigger the tank you have, the better deal it is to exchange the tanks. So once you got those crappy old tanks, you get them from like Craigslist or whatever. You take them to a welding shop or or somewhere, air gas, whatever. You find somebody local near you and you exchange the tank for one that's full. So don't be that guy that buys a brand new tank and then goes to the exchange and gets super pissed when they give you a tank that's not brand new. Because the next time you come back, they're probably going to give you a brand new tank or something like that. The last time I went to exchange, my I exchanged my tanks and I got... Nothing but brand new, brand new tanks was still the, still the, the sticker from the, they just got those in. Uh, and you know, that's a thing, right? Jake Hussey's asking a fantastic question, fantastic personal question about the production of the show here, how things are going. He's asking, have I settled on a PC yet? Um, uh, the PC build that I think I'm going to be doing is, uh, is going to be what's the word what's the word i'm looking for here uh it's probably going to be a thread ripper build so i'm basically waiting for the thread ripper which is a ryzen amd uh cpu i'm probably going to be doing that i was talking with bentley about it a lot today and i think i came to the conclusion that we're probably i'm probably just going to do a thread ripper build uh other than the straight ryzen chip uh, probably going to be building that, which means I'm going to have to order parts and then wait and then order parts and then wait because they are kind of cost prohibitive, but I do need a workstation that is going to last a long time. So, and that seems to be the only route they're going to be able to go. Um, so as you guys know, basically all the money I make goes back into the production of being able to more effectively do videos, um, film things and all that kind of stuff. Um, I spent all my money on a new gimbal, which actually works quite well, but it doesn't do some of the stuff that I want it to do. Uh, so I'm thinking I might end up having to sell one of my cameras so that I can get a different camera, which kind of sucks. Uh, but it's the way she goes. Um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. It's kind of sad, but who? we'll see. And uh, so I'm going to order the case, the power supply, and some other parts uh, to fill out uh, and get ready to build uh, the motherboard and the processor is what's going to be the really expensive part. And I need to make sure that I order those and am able to test those. So I just want to make sure that I bundle everything all at the right time, get everything in, and I'm able to pay for it. So that's going to be an issue, but uh, I did open a new credit line, so I think I'll probably end up 
throwing some of the stuff onto credit and then just hopefully paying it back in the future with, uh, you know, crazy labor and digging holes and stuff <laughs> and all that. Uh, Daniel Kibu Fish says, I did that with my work phone, lost it for a week. Work charged me 50 pounds. They gave me a new one that I found it. Now you have a 50 pound electronic brick. I will tell you that old cell phones actually are super useful. Um, well, this one still has the sticker on the back of it. I'm going to take that off. So here's my old phone. It's the old G7. So the old, uh, the Galaxy, or the, not the G7, the S7, the Galaxy S7. Uh, this is an old, old phone, but it's quite useful to have old phones like this around because they work great for certain things like maybe you're somebody who has a whole bunch of Fluval lights. This can actually work as your Fluval light controller uh, because you can run. Now, there's it's not a Fluval app or anything like that, but you can actually run some Wi-Fi apps on here that could control through the Bluetooth to run the Fluval lights through Wi-Fi. And you can actually hook them into, you know, running off of like Alexa or Google or whatever. You can actually do it that way. I don't recommend it because it's 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 definitely not a one button solution. It's sort of crazy, but eh, it's something maybe something that you could do that's sort of fish related, right? Or you could get into building a bunch of Arduino boards and then connect those. And but I don't remember that either. Jason R is here. What's up? Out of curiosity, do you have or recommend a certain dissolved oxygen meter or know of a way to check that? Uh, Want to check the levels of Dietzenbach filter reverse build uh, versus other designs? Oh, what's up, Jason? I keep forgetting to email you back, dude. Um, every time I'm like going to email Jason back, I'm like on my cell phone and I just can't do it justice. And honestly, today you're on my list to... Um, you are on my list, <laughs> literally, to uh, email back, and then I had to do my tax thing. So I just that two hours of taxes, like, is just what I had to do. Um, and I was also chatting with Bentley about the computer situation. So I guess it's a it's a multifaceted. I suck. Okay, I have two links for an oxygen meter. Uh, that you can get now uh, the first one is ridiculously expensive okay it is ridiculously expensive but it's a milwaukee one that i have used and it's a milwaukee one that works it's like 200 bucks which is kind of crazy right but there are newer ones out there that are like the tds meters um that may or may not be all that accurate, but considering they're like between 15 and $20, here's the, uh, oh, this one's actually $14 and it's free one day shipping. Oh my God. Um, whether it's accurate or not, I, I don't know, but you could at least be comparing it with itself. So maybe it'll work for a couple months or something and you'll be able to, to compare its readings to its own readings um, and, uh, so there's two options for you. You could get the expensive Milwaukee one. I do know that one works. Um, these little TDS ones. Oh, this one's just a straight pH meter. Hold on. Doesn't it have a, wait, I might've. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it's in there. Yeah. It's in that one. Yeah. Cool. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so those cheap ones, they probably work. Probably not. Who knows? Not the biggest thing. Not. Don't worry too much about it. If you do get a cheap one, just only compare it with itself, whatever it's reading, um, and go that way. Uh, Ed's Fish says, I freaking love Milwaukee. Their tools really hold up to my shenanigans. I will say I like Milwaukee. I, I kind of prefer, personally prefer um, DeWalt over the Milwaukee. I think it just has to do with the ergonomics of DeWalt. Like I've used DeWalt for a really long time, and it just feels right in my hand. Plus, they're black and yellow like a bee, and you guys know I'm covered in bee tattoos, so that's probably pretty natural, right? 
So they did a good idea with their design that they were going to go yellow and black because that appeals to me. And they end up spending a ton of money on DeWalt tools. I like their battery life better also on the big batteries, not the little dinky, goofy batteries, but the big batteries. They seem to work pretty good. Uh, life, pr- life plants recommended for a 10-gallon and lower. Um, nothing huge. So no sword plants, no upon a Geaton, you know what I mean? Um, just get mostly small growing plants. And um, if you're going to go high-tech, low-tech, uh, low pH, high pH, medium pH, all that kind of stuff, just the, the plants that I recommend isn't too necessarily to the tank size, because, I mean, even big plants can be kind of tamed to a certain degree. Um, but I, I don't really recommend plants to the tank size. I would I would more look to build the environment that you're trying to build, the ecosystem you're trying to build, the little shenaniganery that you're trying to put together and go that route. Not so much just based on the size. All right, let's check here. D-Rec, Derek. Is our one Patreonizer of the day. He's raised his pledge, you guys. Which, thank you very much, Derek. I very much appreciate that. Thanks for taking it. Uh, he raised it up. As you guys know, you guys can always change your uh, your Patreonization. Like, you know, maybe maybe times are tough and you used to do 10 bucks and you're like, oh, I got to do $1 a month for a little while. That's always uh, that's something that you can do too. You can always change it. You can always up it, down it. Left it, right it, whatever you want to do. If you want to do up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start, you might get 99 lives. Um, Ed's Fish, my bro, is master mechanic, and I always laughed at him over his snap-on toolboxes. I have milk crates that do the same thing. I have to tell you, um, at one point in time, I probably had $20,000 worth of snap-on tools, and that was a huge mistake on my B, my part. Um, I, all, all I could say... Just total BS. They are great tools. They work well. Uh, they're about 30 times the price that they're supposed to be. Uh, for anyone. It doesn't even matter. I mean, I could have paid a blacksmith to like hand forge the tools for me uh, for cheaper. Lexi V tip when working with Biomedia. Do not blow the dust away without wearing safety goggles. Otherwise, you can end up under the sink waterboarding yourself to get it out of your eye. <laughs> that makes sense. Megan Ness says, what's this 54 likes about? We should do a like spike, you guys. And a five, a four, a three, a two, a one. Hit that like button. <clears throat> like button. All right. I did it. I did the requisite, like, you guys are supposed to like and subscribe thing. Well, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, Team Fam Squad. <laughs> you, know, you guys ever notice that people always do that? They figure out, like, some kind of catchphrase thing to throw at you at the very beginning of the show. Have you guys ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? Anytime you click on a YouTube video, it's always like, Hey, I'm blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. You should blah, blah, blah. Like and subscribe and... Bah! And then there's an intro. I just yell and scream and, and do my singing thing. <laughs> Barbara Jackson, 1B, 2B, 3Bs. Ah, I like it. Uh, all right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm realizing that it's starting to get dark outside, and I do have to wrap up some work in the great outdoors before it gets dark outside and all the monsters come out of the darkness and try to bite my face off. Um, all right. I want to say thanks to uh, Vexing Cat. M. Howie 9, and there was only three Super Chats today. 54 Punchy. So thank you very much, you guys, for uh, contributing, Super Chatting, kicking it in. Thank you, everybody, for your regular chatting and your like buttoning and your subscribe rising and uh, catchphrase fam squad, blah, blah, blah. Um, love you guys. Do have a great couple of days, and I'll see you back here on Friday or whatever. I don't know. I'll try to give you a shout out or something. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody have a good time. Don't get too weird out in the streets and 